Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Opera Talk 10. I'm James, and I'm here with composer Kurt Erickson. Uh, welcome, and oh. thank you Thank you for joining me. Yeah, today. thank you, James. It's a real pleasure. You bet. Uh, we are, again, at the Meyerovich Gallery here in San Francisco on Grant Street, 251 Post. Uh, and, of course, this is artist Alex Katz. Alex Katz at 90. The show is still running. Um, so, uh, how are you? What's going on? I'm, I'm great. I'm fantastic. Thanks. Thanks okay. so much. It's great to be here. Um, the art's amazing. You know, I mean, we're going to talk about music, but I'm just kind of overwhelmed just looking at everything. Great. Um, okay, so I guess we'll, we'll run through how we met. Um, I met you actually at um, a, a, in the Fillmore, actually, for the first time um, at the oh, temple, yeah. uh, the, the church where Brian was performing. Yes. Yeah, Remember Brian, Brian, Brian Asawa. Asawa. Yeah, yeah, we have him in common as a friend, and um, he was performing, and he performed your work. Yeah, he yeah he did. Gosh, I miss that guy. Yeah, um, I was that was he had commissioned a set called Four and Lucy and Love Songs, and it was sort of kind of a mini tour of kind of the Pacific Pacific Northwest. And he did it in L.A. too, right? Long Beach, yeah. L.A., San Francisco, right. a small college outside of Seattle. Uh, it turns out that was the last. That was that was the last. We have a video from I believe the Napa Music Festival, which we did the following summer. Mm -hmm. um, that was the last recording we had with Brian, and I was just honored to work with him and to kind of make that connection with him, have him sing my music, which was yeah amazing. And experience. so I saw you perform it in Napa. Yes. Uh, and there's a great video, and we'll attach the video uh, right. to to our talk. Um, and of course. Um, Heidi, your wife. Yes. You want to talk about Heidi? She's oh. amazing. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> hey, sweetie. Yeah, um, I'm kind of the luckiest guy on the planet right now. I mean, to be a, to be a, a, a working composer, have an incredible partner who is just so inspiring, and we get to work together, sing, make music together. Yeah, incredibly lucky. It's a good pairing. It's a great pairing. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. And oh. Heidi Moss Erickson is also, uh, uh, she's done an opera talk uh, with, uh, with me, actually, uh, in 2016. Yes. So we learned all, all about vocal pedagogy, yeah. pedagogy, sorry, yeah. pedagogy? I want to say it in French. Pedagogy. Pedagogy, yeah. thank yeah, you, yeah. okay. Anyway, um, and uh, science, and voice, and it was really amazing. So we'll also attach Heidi okay. onto, this, onto this opera talk. I'm going to check one thing really quick. Excuse okay. me, everyone. I just want to make sure we're... All in focus. And yeah, I know it's a little impromptu. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> but Kurt is in focus. Okay, good. good. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, we're live. It's, you know, yeah. it is what it is. It's, yeah. all good. it's all good. Um, so, anyway, um, so <coughs> we talked a little bit before we went live. And as you know, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a brand consultant. I love opera, I love music, I love the stories that artists, composers, musicians have to tell. So maybe you could tell us where you see Brand Kurt. What, you know, where where is your niche? Where's your spot? And where are you going? Sure. Well, you know, and I, I love doing this because it makes you really think and take stock of your life and all these things that we just sort of operate on unconsciously. And you go, Ooh, I, I really have to think about this because I'm going to have to communicate this. And what is my brand? And I think for me, um, I think I think the most important thing for me is uh, connection. As connection and making connections um, as as an artist as a working composer um, telling my story you know in situations like this and creating works and then sharing them with the public um, and also working and having um, having significant and long-lasting relationships with fellow artists mm -hmm. and performing artists uh, I have had about 10 years of multi-year composer residencies and oh. um, you know, that's, that's really significant and that it gives you prolonged periods of time to really work with people mm -hmm. and to help bring your ideas and your musical creation to life. Um, you know, what I do and what my fellow composers do and, you know, in, in our composing studios or rooms or wherever it is that we're writing, you know, it's a very solitary kind of pursuit and it's great. It's incredibly rewarding and we get, you know, such a high from it. Mm -hmm. But it's not the end step, and it's not the end goal. Um, the final goal is actually working with artists and, and creating it in real time for the public. And that's, 
that's really, you know, that's the gold star. And when you can kind of get these relationships and work with different artists, it's, you know, it's just a really fantastic, fortunate experience. Well, I, I, you know, as in business, you, you don't exist by yourself. It's about partners. It's about yep. working with your colleagues. It's about something I've always believed, shared success is sweetest. I think. Yes, yes. You know, collaborating with others and, yeah. and, and, and achieving goals and, yep. uh, you know, creating. And you, and you have to want to do that. And, you, yeah. you know, some people it comes easier than others. Sure. Right? I, mean, I don't think that's necessarily a, uh, a judgment there, but I'm the, my psychological makeup, I really enjoy sharing art and working with other people. And for me, that's when the best uh, uh, creations occur. Perfect. Okay, um, so let's see. I'm just going to go down my list here. So mm -hmm. you talked about your residencies, your uh, maybe your love of literature. Yeah, yeah. This is opera. Poetry. Talk, this is opera talk. Yeah. Um, I'm an opera guy. I'm a, I'm a writer for the voice guy. Um, and I think you know, w we love the drama. We love the the stage. Um, but you know, I I came from a strong literature background. I. I thought there was a long period of time where I, I thought I would be like do graduate work in comparative literature. You know, son of a school teacher, just reading all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I sort of had a strange kind of trip to composition, trained as a pianist, but you know, I started writing, reading poetry, and I found that as I was sort of developing one skill set, it started to transfer into another skill set. I don't usually tell that story because it's not the way you usually go on a more traditional path to composition. Mm -hmm. But for me, literature, poetry, is, and music, you know, they're really inseparable. So working as I've been with a uh, composer residency, for example, with Leader Alive, where I'm just writing you know, years worth of, sing of, of pieces for singers, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is something I'm really interested in. And, and I'm kind of chomping at the bit to jump back into opera projects. Um, I've got a couple playwrights that I'm uh, Kind of talking with and hoping to start a couple projects this summer. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And I, I did mention to you, um, you know, there's Opera for All Voices. Yeah. I did mention this yeah, to that you. Sounds this, this, and I did actually talk to Andre Fellows Walters, so maybe we'll, we'll, connect, we'll connect you. Who we'll knows, right? <laughs> it's all about collaboration. Wonderful <laughs> storytelling. This is great. Storytelling, right. absolutely. Um, okay, so. <laughs> What experiences or, or or narratives or stories, you know, are you've already kind of touched on this, but mm -hmm. in terms of grounding and defining, you know, your ongoing development as a composer and keeping you curious and excited? I think, you know, um, I think you know, a lot of composers and artists we're always interested in what the next project is. Mm -hmm. You know, and for for me right now, um, it's it's opera, it's writing for the voice. Um, you know, it's, it's endlessly fascinating, I, I, I would say. Um, I think as a composer, too, um, being both a pianist and a composer, um, it puts you in a good position because then you, it's easy to sort of work with your fellow artists, create things, you can kind of see it and adjust to things that are happening uh, in, world, in, in real time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've got a couple pieces that I'm kind of finishing up. There's an uh, interesting work for, for Baritone, uh, a baritone song cycle called Food Porn. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> you tell. Yeah, I'm all about, I'm all about good the titles. Food porn. Okay, tell yeah, us. well, you know, I lived tell in us. Napa for a good four and a half years. and That I'm, explains a lot. I'm, <laughs> I'm as much of a foodie as anyone, yeah. and I'm simultaneously in love and mm -hmm. also endlessly amused by people rapturing on about food and wine mm -hmm. and food pairings. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, I started kind of like looking through a lot of, of collections and, and uh, advertisements, mm -hmm. and they were so lovingly over the top that I just, I, I have to set this to music. Wonderful. And okay. so I am. So is this is in progress? <laughs> uh, I've got, I think I've got the fifth out of six songs completed. So where, where do you think this will be released to the world? Um, you know, it's funny when you contact some singers and say, "Hey, I've got this great song set called Food Porn." You'd be surprised <laughs> at the uh, at the level of interest. <laughs> High, low? I mean, I don't know. I could, it could go either way. I think it could go either way. Yeah, there's a lot of different directions, but right. you right. come up with a really good title, right? And uh, people's ears perk up. Well, it has to work with their brand, right? Yes. 
Yes. yes so it does. you know they have they have to be the right singer. It's not yes. it's not necessarily. That's true, and not everyone is. Maybe right? a new, maybe someone who's into new music or new opera, new rap. Yeah, or someone who wants something Break a little bit more of a humorous approach. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. I would say. Well, you should contact Susan Graham. Ooh. Hey, we just okay. I just yeah because she's amazing. She's like she's yeah. she's an innovator and she breaks. She breaks barriers all the time. I saw her at Santa Fe Opera this summer. Oh wow! Doing a uh, it was a talk, actually not not like this. Okay. Um, much much higher level and much you know. Oh, come on, don't sell it short. This well, is whatever you know. In terms of me, <laughs> I'm talking about me, not you. Oh. Um, so in any way, in any case, um, uh, she was just sharing you know her her thoughts on opera, on the industry, on the business, on singers, and she's actually working with LA Opera, mm -hmm. the uh, young artist program there. Oh okay. And so she was kind of touching on that, but. She was just telling us incredible stories and so forth. So anyway, I, know, just kind of, I don't know. That just came out of nowhere. I don't know why. No, I mean I think that's great. I think we have, you know, we're living now, and so we need to do things that. I mean, this is a part of my life now, and and this is what people are thinking about. And I think you know we need to do that. No one wants just to hear, you know, blah. Well, here's a piece, and it's boring. It's got right. the same title that people have been blaming sure. their pieces for the last two hundred years. Blah blah blah. Right? I mean, we need a real connection to what's going on now. Uh, otherwise, what's the point? Right. You know? What's yeah. the point? Absolutely. Um, okay, let's, let's talk about, uh, maybe you, you talked here about craftsmanship, craftsmanship and um, in terms of composing. And so I guess that would kind of lead me to start, because we did talk about it, like, you know, your... I asked you if you had composed an opera before, or if you've gone down yeah. that route, and you actually have. Yes, yes. So maybe, maybe touch on that. Sure, yeah, I, yeah, I'd love to. Um, let's see, so a couple projects. The first one with the playwright Aaron Loeb, fantastic playwright. And speaking of good titles, a little shout out to him. His, uh, uh, his play, Abraham Lincoln's Big Gay Dance Party, from about 2008. That's, that's still, like, that's the high watermark for, for titles, I think. Right? Uh, so we did that. <laughs> we we did a one act uh, opera. It was a commission from a uh, a, a summer music festival in Houston, uh, Lone Star Lyric Theater. A couple of uh, education uh, college music departments then grabbed on. It turned into a sort of a consortium. Uh, it was a comic opera called uh, "What Your Parents Don't Want You to Know." Uh, the real story about fairy tales, okay. kind of spoofing on Cinderella mm -hmm. and like the really funny. Um, and then in 2012, I did a project uh, with Festival Opera, and it was actually it was the first uh, it was the first project that uh, my now wife Heidi, hey sweetie, uh, and I uh, took part in. Uh, it was uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a great another great experience where this time I was actually kind of more of a music director role, and I was on stage and I was playing. Uh, uh, some wonderful artists and performers, and then I got really involved with. Uh, art song writing in, in that capacity. My residency with Leader Alive started writing for different singers, uh, Kirk Eichelberger, uh, Brian Asawa, Kendra Sarich. Um, and, you know, it's like anything else in a career. You get um, a certain momentum and then it sort of feeds on itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but the detriment of that was that I sort of, you know, I kind of like got lost in the opera world. And so now I'm, I'm like, gosh, I, I need to jump back into this because. Mm -hmm. For a musician, for a, I mean, for a composer, pianist, a guy that loves opera, this is kind of a no-brainer. Sure. You know? sure. And so, this summer, that's sort of my that's my plan. It's funny, we, you know, composers we're, we're dreamers. We have these projects, these visions, and then, you know, you kind of have oh, I'd like to do this at some point, and then there are some things where you go, no, I'd like to do this, and I want to do it right now. Right. You know. And so that's that's kind of that's where you at. Where you're at. Okay. Yep. Wonderful. Absolutely. Um, okay, so maybe you could riff on upcoming things or projects. You know, you've kind of touched on that already. And um, any sort of, you know, there's a lot of perhaps students who might see this, uh, people who are studying, mm -hmm. want to be composers. I don't know, I, I kind of, maybe I'm going to steal this. You know, what would you tell your 18-year-old your self? Or, you know, or, you know, what? There's so many things. There's so many things, right? <laughs> uh, I'm in the composing. <laughs> You know, okay, good. Let's compartmentalize it to that, yeah. But in terms of you know, um, you know, any words of advice or thoughts, reflections, um, strategies, yeah. anything you know, in terms of 
staying curious and growing your career and you know and, and being able to be a working artist yeah no that's just a this is a good question um, I think I think for me um, I learned learn by doing learn by doing um, I I learned how to compose I mean I mean there's so many steps you kind of have to go through and as a pianist and going through through programs and putting in your 10,000 hours mm -hmm. little shout out to Malcolm Gladwell though there um, but then by actually doing it and working with find people that you can create pieces with and find you know find friends that would be willing to work with you and rehearse with you and perform pieces mm -hmm. and then you make a ton of mistakes but then you learn from them and you're not going to learn from those mistakes if you don't actually make them first and then just kind of slowly you know expanding okay so my first pieces were pieces I wrote for the piano because I could play them mm -hmm. and I could instantly see what's working what's not working mm -hmm. and then it was let's say piano and violin and then expanding kind of the forces that way um, I think also then um, and you, you just mentioned this being curious, being having an in, insatiable curiosity, and doing things and trying to figure things out um, from an autodidactic standpoint, teaching yourself, not because someone told you to do it, because you're really interested in it, mm -hmm. and I want to be interested in it. And we all have that sort of that curiosity within us, but you can cultivate that, and that's a skill set that you can develop even more. Um, so I think my advice, and this is the advice that I give, I mean, I teach at a college, I want to give talks, is you know, do more and push yourself and throw yourself out there and be a little fearless about it, right? You have to be a little fearless about it because if you're waiting for that right time, that right time will never, never come. come. Yeah. It will never come. That really helps me, actually, because it kind of reinforces something that I... You have to stay busy, and you have to keep putting things out and trying new things. Have a plan, have a yeah. strategy, have a direction. Obviously, just don't throw everything up on the wall and hope that it will all work, because that probably wouldn't be a necessarily Agreed. a great thing. Agreed. Um, but uh, being fearless, uh, you know, obviously as sensible as you can be, you know, to the yeah. degree that you know you still need to eat, you still need to do things that you need to do. Yeah. But, but yeah, being fearless and not being afraid to fail. I think. Yeah. Uh, one of the interesting experiences I had was, you know, working in a in a in a co-working environment, and people, you know, I'm, you know, I just turned 49. Hi, not everyone. Happy birthday! Uh, thank you. But um, but you know, people were in their 20s or maybe 30s, and this incredible fear of failure. Yeah. Like we cannot fail. It's either we win or we have completely lost. Yeah. And I know not everyone, and I'm not trying to generalize here. Um, I, I learn a lot from millennials, trust me, because uh, they, they keep me on my toes, and, and, and I think we can all learn from each other, period. Mm -hmm. yep. um, but I, I know that I was probably very much the same way when I was in my 20s and 30s, but it's really learned through failure, yeah. or through, through trying things, and augmenting, and tweaking, and pivoting, and so forth. So. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. I mean, I think it, this is sort of a life lesson, mm -hmm. you know, for all of us. You have a have a plan. Plan is important, mm -hmm. but then you got to step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And I look back at some of the opportunities, some of the performances, and you know, from my forty-eight year old self, I look back and go, yeah, I probably wasn't ready for that, mm -hmm. or I was just barely ready, but I did it anyway, and I learned from it, and it put me in a position where it sort of catapulted me to the next level. And if I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have gotten to that that next kind of stage as right. quickly. Right, right. So you know, I'm grateful. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're grateful that you're here, <laughs> and uh, thank you for joining us. And yeah. anything else you'd like to mention or? Um, no, I just out or? well, just just a gratitude for for you for this opportunity to talk. Um, I think the more you can engage composers, I mean. Look, I, I'm a composer. I'm writing all over the all over the place and for a lot of different people. But you know, you can't you can't invite Brahms here <laughs> or Mozart. You can't send them a text. They're not going to show Next up. Next best thing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so engage living artists. Yes. Um, and and you have an opportunity to shape the creation of new works. That's really exciting. That's a really cool thing. You know, and you can have the best uh, advice I get and is from performers. Performers help me write my pieces. 
Oh, really? That's heresy, right? So maybe. Well, how? I mean, maybe tell me. Oh, on that simple. Or just is, is this working? Does this work? Does this work? What yeah. about this? And then people start feeling a little bit more comfortable. Have you considered this? That's right. a great idea. Okay. I'm trying to get this effect. What's the best way to do it? Let now ask, it's you're now this really is a collaboration. Right. Let me ask you this then: if 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 you're working with uh, uh, singers and so forth, mm -hmm. obviously there's going to be a librettist that you're working with. Mm -hmm. Or do you do that too? Or do you do you do you kind of? Or you work with the librettists, generally speaking? Well, you know, it depends. Okay. I mean, it depends where the text comes from. But I, I do work with librettists. I work with poets, playwrights all the time. I love that. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, sometimes it's ooh, can we tweak this? Can we tweak the language? Sometimes it's kind of a three-way talk mm -hmm. uh, in between all the parties. Right. right. But yeah. Oh yeah. No, they, you, you get better advice from performers than you, you than you do from fellow composers. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of that's hooks, a big hooks, statement. Hooks in the kitchen. Kind yeah. Of thing. yeah. If you're in the trenches, you know. Yeah. Right. 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 Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Insights. Insights. All right. Um, so uh, we're going to close Opera Talk Ten. If you out there would like to Opera Talk with me here in San Francisco or perhaps Santa Fe or, no, or another city, uh, please contact me and uh, we'll work it out. Uh, this is a no fee storytelling project. Uh, something that I do because I love opera and I love speaking with people in the opera and classical music space and um, so we'll go from there so we close now thank you all uh, and actually uh, again many thanks to Alex Myrovich yeah. uh, for the Myrovich sure. Gallery here at 251 Post Street uh, the current show is Alex Cass right here and also Carlos Rolon um, I will attach some of his work thank you all have a wonderful weekend thank you. bye